Hello and welcome to the month of Sagittarius. This is when the Sun passes through the sign of Sagittarius roughly from the 22nd of November to the winter solstice. Sagittarius is a fire sign and fire is the masculine outward expansive energy. So things start to feel very different when we come out of the Scorpio inward water magnetic deep intense energy and suddenly burst combust into this expansive beautiful fire sign things start to seem a bit more possible potential open and expansive so Sagittarius is fire it's the oldest of the fire signs so for me it's the ancestral fire it's when we sit around the campfire or we burn the Yule log in the middle of the winter and we sit around and stare into the flames. It's got that trance-like aspect. It's got an honour of the ancestors. It's got a storytelling and a travelling and a shamanic aspect to it. And also there's that warmth and generosity of the group. So those are the main feelings that I have for Sagittarius as it's a fire sign that comes around and to bring in the midwinter. The other fire that it represents obviously is the sun, as the sun is reborn at the winter solstice. So to explain that, the sun actually rises and sets at the same place for three days from the 21st to the 24th of December and then the arc of the sun starts to widen. This means the daylight hours get longer and this is the sun being reborn, bringing hope back to the land because the sun equals a good harvest. It equals growing and life and warmth. So it was a very, very important time when people would actually sit around together keeping each other communally comfortable at the hardest time of the year but there's that frisson of hope as the sun begins to expand in its environment it begins to widen its arc and the daylight hours return so this is the story of christmas the sun being reborn and the sun actually sets on the southern cross at this time of year so this is the that's a constellation and the sun setting on the cross that's the sun dying on the cross to be reborn three days later so we have the resurrection story um, with its astrological origins there as well it's a, a wonderful time of year because it's one of the festivals as we head towards the solstice yule or christmas it's one of the festivals that's actually kept a lot of its original uh, meanings and it may be a little bit hidden but there's a lot of truth still in it so it's quite worth having a look at the origins astrologically of the Christmas myths so that we can keep uh, the traditions in good faith and keep the old ways alive. So first of all we have the archer. Sagittarius is the archer and the symbol is the arrow. This arrow actually shoots directly to galactic centre, so basically the constellation Sagittarius is in the very centre of our uh, Milky Way, which is right next to the galactic centre. So we have this direct and to the point hunter aspect with the Sagittarian. The planet is Jupiter, and this is where the big expansion comes, because Jupiter is one of the biggest planets in our solar system, the biggest one after the Sun, which is actually a star, but there you go. And it has a massive, expansive field, so we have this generosity and optimism and expansiveness that comes in when we allocate the planet Jupiter. Jupiter's largely red and white with a big belly, and that's where Father Christmas gets his uh, costume from way before the soft drinks companies and everything brought that in with their advertising. The red and white is also um, linking back to the um, psychedelic mushrooms, the red cap, because in the Nordic tales the reindeers would eat the, the um, mushrooms or they would drink the wee of the shaman that had eaten the mushrooms, but either way that psychedelic would get into the reindeers, the red and white, the red cap of Santa Claus and the white beard and then they would go flying around the world. So that's actually a story of shamanic tripping. As a side note, the reindeers were probably female because male reindeers lose their antlers at this time of year. So when you think of Rudolph, you might want to think of female and the productivity of those reindeers getting all the presents delivered in a single night. So that's the origin of that. Um, when we look at the Sagittarian archetype, we often see with Jupiter, with Zeus, with Tyrannus, with Shango, all the thunder and lightning gods 
tend to be associated with this sign. If you look at the Wheel of Fortune, that would be the card associated with Jupiter in the tarot deck and the number nine. So we're looking at some very big, expansive, completing energy. Um, my landscape for this sign is the thunder and the lightning, the thunder being Sagittarius and the lightning being Gemini. So when we look at the myth of Thor, for example, throwing his hammer for it to return straight back to his hand, that was the ancients telling us that they knew about the electromagnetic properties of thunder and lightning and the science behind it. So we have that loop, we have that returning and we have that thunder and lightning, wheel of fortune, everything turning as it should. All of those myths go together very, very well with this Sagittarian energy. So during the month of Sagittarius we get a new moon in Sagittarius because that's when the sun and the moon are together. So the new moon comes along and this is a great time for us to set our intentions and to actually start the activities for the festivities. So it's a productive time but when we're harnessing the Sagittarian energy we're looking at shooting that arrow directly. We're looking at having pure aim. We're looking at travelling very, very far but we have an expansive and optimistic and possibly a teamwork with the reindeer and the sitting around the hearth fire. We have that kind of where are we as a group and where do we want to go together as the days lengthen. So try and have a think about shooting the arrow directly. Before the Sagittarius new moon you could have a look at where you're off target. You could have a look and see whether your targets are actually current or whether you're working to a very old list of priorities. So it's a good time to actually freshen up that aim before we fire at the Sagittarius new moon. So a two week window to just really get some vision, to maybe do some shamanic work as well, to honor the ancestors, to stare into the flames. It's a great time to have a fire festival um, or you could do that at the winter solstice. The herbs and the crystals that I like for Sagittarius, obviously we've got frankincense because we're looking at the story of the three wise men and Sagittarius is the sage. So I'd say sage is obviously number one herb, but then the frankincense aspect of frankincense, gold and myrrh um, is also very good. It was always used in uh, embalming and in ceremonies across across the ancient world. It still is. It's an uh, absolutely stunning, deep, connective and very, very spiritual, especially if you actually burn the crystals. The crystals I like for the Sagittarius New Moon are Tiger's Eye. For me, Sagittarius is partly like the tiger with the orange and black stripes, the master of the jungle, the biggest cat. It's that light and dark. It's the, the depth that we get with the tiger with the fire in his eyes. So Tiger Eye is very creative and it actually brings in creative confidence and a little bit of a rebirth there with your inner sun. And then Lapis Lazuli is the crystal that's traditionally associated with Sagittarius, the blue and the gold of the night sky. And it was one of the crystals that was worn in the breastplate of the high priests. And it's always been used very, very connected with meditation and ritual. Then when the moon carries on, two weeks after the new moon in Sagittarius, we end up with the full moon in Gemini. And the opposite when the sun and the moon are opposite. So the full moon in Gemini calls us to reflect upon what we started at the new moon in Gemini six months ago in June or July. So the reflective aspect, the sun is reflecting all of its light off the moon and back to earth. It's a great time to be still, but with the Gemini they're not known for being still. So this is a good time to practice presence and stillness to get beyond the mind, because Gemini is the streaming mind, and to actually practice listening, listen between the spaces, and actually uh, connect all of the internal parts of ourselves, rather than just being skimming across the surface. So it's a great time to go deep, to look at the mind, the processing mind, but also the subconscious, and how we're thinking, and how we're speaking, and how we're acting because Gemini is the magician, the one that turns thought forms into reality. So when there's a full moon in Gemini, this is a great time to just get past the chattering mind and to the deeper realms and to see what we're actually creating and from where. 
the crystals and herbs that I like for Gemini the herb is chamomile because it's very calming it's when you look at it it's like a little daisy and one of the flowers for me with Gemini is the daisies the little white and yellow communal scattering across a field it's it's the bees and the daisies for me are a very community and light and friendly Gemini energy so chamomile and it's got that calming aspect as well because Geminis can be quite nervy and to go with that citrine again we're dealing with the confidence and we're <coughs> excuse me we're dealing with slowing down getting into our center so the nervous system can be very highly strung in that Gemini but if you work with citrine then that will actually center and it's also got a connection back to our family roots as well so um, for all those bees that are flying around that citrine can actually connect you back to your core and give you a sense of centering so to recap we have the Sun going into Sagittarius we have the chance to get out of the Scorpio realms to expand to put our eyes on target at the new moon to expand into our potential make sure that we're on course and then have a beautiful reflective time at the Gemini full moon all walking towards the winter solstice where we can actually look at the myths and the legends and the gods and the goddesses or principles and reconnect with our ancestors and celebrate that festivity with authenticity so that's the month of Sagittarius and I'll see you next month